Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Future Gamers Podcast. My name is Jacob Best of the Realm Hotter. Today, I'm just joined by Trollbeard. Hey, how's it going? Say, I was, say hello. Uh, <laughs> I, I uh, had forgotten to mute something on my end, and then I was trying not to chuckle at the, the Bob picture there again, yep. so it just threw me off. Bob is missing. <laughs> we don't write where he is, but he's missing. <laughs> yes. He he's busy he's doing doing other things with important things. Adult stuff. No adult, fun. Yes, exactly. Adult stuff. That's what it is. Responsible things. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> so in the meantime, we have not been doing responsible things. We've been playing video games. <laughs> Which is the best well, thing been, to kinda do. Well, I've been doing some responsible things in between. I just thankfully have no social life. Yeah, I do responsible things for 10 hours a day than I do the, the video game thing. So, speaking of that, uh, what we've been doing is you've been playing Fortnite. Surprise! Yay! The most popular thing in the world. I'm just another one of the victims. Yeah, I'm gone. I'm done. I gotta say, I uh, played some more. I ran into the whole build, 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 build up a tower thing, and I was like, no. No. I just I can't. Yeah, do it. that's been a thing. The further and further it gets into the seasons, and the more people are getting better at the game, I've been running into like with a ridiculous frequency of since I'm playing on PS4, the PS4 version supports mouse and keyboard natively. Really? Yeah, it's the that. only one of the console platforms that does that. Xbox. So you can imagine. It. Yeah, but the thing is, it's still, like, even though PS4 natively accepts mouse and keyboard, it's still a developer's choice. So oh, okay. they could, you can plug in a mouse and keyboard and use the web browser, do everything you want to, typing everything in to chat. Everything works just fine. It's just, it's not supported inside pretty much any video game except for the two epic games that came out on PS4 which would be Paragon, R.I.P., and now Fortnite are the only two I can think of off the top of my head. But yeah, so that's become a real annoyance because there's no kind of matchmaking system or ranking system. Right. So it's just kind of random. You just jump in and all of a sudden you're, you just, you're, I'm a fairly good player. I've won a lot. I'm getting up on 400 wins for the amount of time I've put in. But uh, you all of a sudden you just turn your turn your head and you just see a guy building the Taj Mahal in your general direction. Yeah. <laughs> because, you know, he's got turn speed, accuracy, dedicated buttons for everything. The and real problem that is... That is what it seems like, because I, I mostly play on Switch and I just, I can't do it. Yeah. Like I've I do it well and you know I've got you know lots of experience doing it for years it's just the biggest problem right now in a lot of cases outside of just the raw like accuracy and the odds of this guy who's decent if we're at similar skill levels he's got a mechanical advantage like we both jump up in midair and turn and we shoot each other odds are he's going to hit me in the head more often than I'm going to hit him so then now I'm dead and he's just dancing like an asshole. Yep, that too. But yeah, the other problem is right now there's no option on any platform where you're using a controller to have an instant edit button. You have to hold the circle B button, whichever controller you're using. And there's always a slight delay. So you're trying to pop open a hole to get back out. And this guy just immediately one button press, flick, shoots you. From his wall, he edited, and now you're gone. It's like, it, it drives me crazy because for the longest time, highly competitive games on the console, people were using, you know, third-party adapters. Yeah. But it, but at least, you know, they had to go out of their way to spend extra money and set that all up. Right, it wasn't common. But now it's like any kid can just get, like, a $15 mouse and keyboard set from Walmart and, you know have a better advantage than most people with a PS4 controller. So like right now, holy crap. What that wasn't that was an item. Yeah, the 
the the guys that are really good with a mouse and keyboard are utterly insane. So are you uh do you build a lot or do you like I just use weapons and kill people? I almost Oh no, I, I'm building all the time. Okay. Like That's I problem. <laughs> Yeah, basically I'm I'm engaging in what the game wants you to do. Although a lot of people are salty about the idea that some of the changes they've made to that game have reduced like the overall materials you find on on average but that doesn't stop you from just smacking a few more trees. Right. It just, it just slows down you maxing out your materials, which every material type outside of wood has always been a terrible grind to get more than, you know, 200 within a reasonable time frame. But what do you even need the other materials for? Well, they're just, you know, alternatives. Now, okay. predominantly everybody is going to use wood because it has the highest starting health so when you're doing an aggressive push it can take an extra bullet compared to brick or metal basically so it doesn't have the it doesn't have the it 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 builds faster to lower health but the initial hp say the initial hp is like 40 and then brick would be 35 metal would be you know 30 but over time you know the wood would have a max of like 400 HP, 500, 600 respectively. I, f- I forget the exact numbers, but you you get if you've got time to set up and post up a base, metal is better, but it takes forever to get to full HP. Okay. And even then, right now they've uh, kind of bumped up all of the uh, explosion radiuses of all the explosives. Good. And you can throw like a brick of C4 and knock down half a building. Good. And they that's come in, what I do. And they come in stacks of four. So that's probably going to be one of the more uh, recent or next up kind of changes they make for meta balance. Because they just did a, a big thing today with the SMGs and the semi-auto snipers. So now both of those are a lot more viable. Okay. And I actually like SMGs. Yeah, they got rid of the tactical SMG, which was like the little like oozy kind of almost looking one. Okay. And they replaced it with the gray SMG you see the guy Moose Elk here using. It's a non-suppressed version of the suppressed he also just picked up in the video. Okay. Basically... It has no first shot accuracy, but it has insane fire rate to the point where if you walk in on a guy, if you don't hit a perfect headshot with a shotgun, odds are that new SMG will melt you (laughs) before you have a chance to fire again. Unless you're really quick on, you know, the weapon swap to something else. I play this game a lot like I play The Division, for instance. I like having a sniper rifle Usually an SMG. I I like SMGs. I never use pistols. I hate pistols in this game. I got dual hey. pistols one time and I I couldn't kill anything. Yeah, the the dual pistols are fun, but they're not super reliable. No. The thing is with the the season five when it started before the content update overnight. So Fortnite has this interesting system of bi-weekly actual client updates and weekly content updates. So they've got a backend system to allow them to make changes to the servers whenever they want to on the yeah. back end without having to update the client. So the update that happened last night was just a change on the server side. So tactical SMG is gone. Now you got the crazy machine gun SMG that you can't, you know, get a guaranteed shot if you crouch and wait for the bloom to close off. But this wasn't a thing. This desert world, right? Yeah, this is part of the Worlds Collide, the the new season. I thought I was crazy, just haven't been here yet. Yeah, I mean, when you're outside of this area, you can see, like, those golden, you know, mountaintops there from these little rock facings. And it really does look like a Wiley e. Coyote ass background in a so cool. Looney Tunes cartoon. 
it uh it's it's really nice. I like this area. There's I a lot of interesting stuff. World. It's so cool. Yeah, they they've got like random, you know, Easter Island Moai heads hmm. all over the map. They've got rifts now. Uh they're tears in reality. There's some actually west of this guy. I don't know if he's gonna go to one. But basically they throw you out into the uh into the air, if he looks up, there's giant like sky buttholes basically. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they're just you know, they're rips in reality. There you go. And uh so if you go through a rift, yeah, there yeah, he looked up. Hey. Uh but yeah, you go through it throws you up in the air and it gives you a chance to pull your parachute again. Oh. So now someone just hit a rift. That's why that pulsed and it made the loud banging sound. Uh, it, it's actually one of the healthiest changes and I don't know how long the, the rifts are going to stay, but it's actually a brilliant change as far as competitive play and overall like strategies of where you land on the map now, because you hit rifts, there are certain, you know, they're, they're spread out well enough around the entire map. Well, yeah, he here. Nope, oh, he just ducked. That's cool. Okay. Yeah, so there's pretty much no spot on the map that's too far to drop. That's also because you make, can uh, the uh, the deaths from the circle. I think gonna go down a lot. Yeah the the vehicles now the golf carts the ATKs right. the increase of ATKs all terrain cart. Jeez. <laughs> But uh, yeah, the, the the addition of those, the fact that they actually work really well and they're fun and silly, they uh, give you the option to jump on to the roof and it bounces like if you ever jumped on to, like tires or a popped uh, uh, like a fire hydrant. Right. They throw you up in the air like boing, you know, like a trampoline. Huh. So there's already clips of people out there just riding up in their car power sliding jump out car keeps rolling they run catch up to it jump off the top bounce into midair and snipe somebody in midair like <laughs> That's crazy. there's 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 utter ridiculous things people have already done in the what two three days this update's been out yeah but I, yeah I, like I, it's i'm not a hater i don't hate the game i just hate the players <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that's been the the thing that drives me crazy is, yeah the the also like they added streamer mode which kind of randomizes like the information of who killed you, who dies in the kill feed, try to reduce you know people stream sniping. Have oh. you come across what that is? No, well, it's where people see is. yeah, so it's where people know see where you're at in the game and try to land and just kill you and dance and bother you. Now, the problem is at the top left of your footage there, it has your name and it has a long hexadecimal string. The hexadecimal string is your server instance. Oh. So even if you have your... Why even show that? I don't know. I think it's for... uh, for uh, bug bug uh, fixing purposes and tracking down reports, but all this information would be still saved on the client side. It wouldn't have to be displayed on screen. So my my friend and I, who's like a 17-year-old kid who's really good at the game, you know, he and I, we met playing it, and he wanted to go do some 1v1s. There was no custom game modes. Right. So basically, we stream sniped each other <laughs> just so we'd be in the same game and tell each other to meet at this one town, and then we'd go fight. Oh, this guy's my so All we had to do he just is, wrecked uh, a couple of building people. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the thing is like we would just get queue up, like say, "Hey, Bob, you queuing up?" He's like, "Yeah." We hit the button. We get in the lobby. We'd look at the last four digits of the number. Hey, is yours E five two three? No. Then we'd leave game. Then we'd repeat just two or three times until we got into the same game, huh. and then bam, 
now we're in the same lobby. We could meet each up, meet each other in the lobby, dance, and then, all right, you're about to catch these hands, Bob. <laughs> That's crazy. It seems like it'd be too difficult with a game like this with so many people playing it. That's that's the problem of just queuing is it's super easy. Like it happens every game on the real popular streamers. There's at least one or two people showing up. Huh. But also, like I said, with the mouse and keyboard thing, like half the kill feed on like prime times for people to try to like stream. Is like every other person I'm killing now or getting killed by is a streamer. And then I go, I click report to see what their actual name was, look them up on YouTube or on Twitch. And I just hear just their fucking keyboard going off. It's like, why the fuck are you playing on PS4? Because you, you can't Damn. you can't hack it on the actual PC front. So you're you're taking an advantage right. to try to make yourself look better. It bugs me so be much. Better if they ever introduce crossplay. Uh, well, no, because all the crossplay lobbies are predominantly PC players. Oh, right. So if you go into crossplay lobbies, even if you know, I was on Xbox, you were on Switch. If it's just me and you together, to my experience, we're going to run into seventy plus percent, you know, PC players. Yeah, that's probably the problem I'm encountering because I just don't understand how anyone builds that fast on the Switch or Xbox. Well, on on the Switch, uh, I mean, a lot of the guys that are probably playing probably have, you know, a lot of experience with the game on another platform and then are also, you know, using controllers with extra buttons right? so that they they can, you know, more effectively hit, you know, jump and build a lot faster. Also, they're probably using full size controllers with Yeah, I'm not you know Yeah, if you're using the Joy Cons, yeah, you're definitely uh you know punching yourself in the dick on that one. Yeah, I might have to start playing with Kimberly on PC and her have her play on Xbox. But yeah, I mean that's the thing is like so many people were annoyed and like the Sony thing and the crossplay, which never affected me because ninety nine percent of the people I know are playing on PS4 anyway. Yeah. But if we wanted to play on Switch, I either a have a Switch, I also have an Xbox, or the easy thing, I can just install Fortnite on my PC and plug in my PS4 controller. Yeah. So I can still keep my PS4 account with my PS4 skins sign in on the PC and play with people on Switch and Xbox. I just can't do it for my PS4. <laughs> you wouldn't have all your cosmetic stuff. Yeah, I would. That's that's the silly thing. It's just they're just expecting the majority of people to not go play on a PC if they're, you know, already so invested on their PS4. Right. I can carry the account over to my PC and play with other people. I just can't take those same purchases and sign in on an Xbox under that account or sign in on a Switch. Right. So it's it's not as big of a problem as people want it to be. It's just they're mad that they're not getting the exact thing they want immediately. Wow, watching this guy play, this is such a high level player. Oh yeah, the that's wow. the sad thing about the uh the first like official like Fortnite like from Epic Games tournament they just did over the weekend. Yeah. Was a custom server with, you know, a hundred players that are, you know, successful players. And not only were the servers, you know, just eating a dick most of the time. <laughs> it was like the the rules of the the tournament didn't, you know, necessarily encourage kills, it encouraged wins. So then, much like the early and pretty much any of the player unknowns tournaments I've come across, it's just a bunch of people hiding a way to get out. It's like the craziness you see here, yeah, wasn't happening that often. Oh, that's even though it's, even though some of the best players in the world are all trying to play smart. <sighs> Whereas, like, w you know, whatever you may think about him, and he's he's a you know, hardcore douche, Keemstar, oh god, random drama YouTuber bullshit. So he's been hosting 
tournaments for like two months now. Okay. And the sponsors he has, they're putting up twenty thousand dollars every Friday. Like that's how much money is in Fortnite for people that aren't epic to, you know, it'd be worthwhile for them to find twenty thousand dollars to put up for tournament prizes for third party, you know, tournaments. Yeah, that's crazy. And the way those tournaments work are you and your partner join the same lobby as two other guys, your your enemies there, and you drop in and whichever combination of kills, you know, from each team is highest wins the round. Okay. So that's where in that tournament you see the insanity because these guys are thirsty. They're just going in trying to get numbers. Yeah. The, the, the winning of the actual round means nothing. Huh. The actual playing and just dominating other people and being a battle royale game, getting really, really fucking lucky. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it, it was crazy when people, you know, that were watching the Fortnite tournament and then there was massive server problems during that tournament was like, you know, you fucked up when Keemstar does it better. Yeah. <laughs> that's not okay. Don't let that idiot have any money. Yeah. Like, ha- can't really hate it. The guy knows how to do business. Like, he's he's regularly finding people to put up $20,000. Well, that's not a compliment Keemstar on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying, like, yeah. as far as an organizer, he's not fucked anybody over yet on money. Right. And he keeps finding people to put money up every week because they've done, like, five or six Fortnite friendlies, uh, the Fortnite Fridays, whatever the fuck they call them, tournaments. Fortnite fuckheads. <laughs> yeah. Fortnite just build, lol. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah, I won't watch that. For multiple reasons. Yeah. Yeah, I, I do like, you know, like, he's got a rocket launcher. I do enjoy taking a rocket launcher to some guy's building and just watching him fall. Yeah, because the explosions on those guns also got a buff. As far as, like, structural damage, they don't necessarily hurt you anymore, but they just rip apart people's buildings now, whereas they used to be dumb. Like, it would be like, oh, hey, I just blew up one wall. Now you throw a rocket launcher at a good spot, it knocks out, like, an entire, like, city block. (laughs) Damn. Like, that whole, like, one-by-one little square there, if you hit it right, you know, say there was like a window on one of those walls, bam, all gone. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's just, and Fortnite, think that it's still going strong and it's still like evolving. It's still getting people hyped, you know, oh, yeah. once every like 60 days for new stuff and then they deliver <laughs> and it's all good. It's like, how? What what insanity is going on in North Virginia or North Carolina? Is that where Epic is? Yeah, they're Richmond. Well, they're Richmond, Virginia. So they're in Virginia or Raleigh, North Carolina. Fuck, they're on the they're on the East Coast and the South. One saw, one of those. Right. I saw on Reddit. I think it was a pizza delivery guy dropped off pizzas to Epic, and the battle bus was outside. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty wild. And then they put that random the burger thing out in the middle of the desert. And then random llamas in like four countries in the Europe. That is so crazy. I mean, I as much as like I talk shit about like like I said the players, it is an incredible game. It's incredible what they're doing with it. Meanwhile, PUBG is I think it's still doing well, but it's kind of floundering. Yeah, every time they do something, like, people just get so mad. It's like, right now, like, for, like, one or two days, they're doing, uh, so they started doing, like, custom crates of, like, skins based on popular players. Well, so, like, they're doing Dead Mouse right now. Yeah, Dead Mouse now, because Dead Mouse has been a big fan of the game, who's played with a bunch of, like, the well-known streamers. 
to the point to where at one of his concerts, he uh, had a highlight clip of him killing well-known streamers. He was playing in the background while he was DJing. <laughs> yeah, I think I personally I feel like PUBG is a better game, but the guy, the Fortnite guys are smarter, obviously. Well, it it's the thing of what are you wanting from your game? Yeah, if you're wanting, you know, actual, you know, you know, tension, pacing, ballistics, models, player knowns is still your game, except for the fact that you know, guys can literally spawn in a car and fly around straight up Hogwarts style and, you know, kill you from midair with a goddamn frying pan because their anti-cheat is utterly pointless at this point. Like, they have three anti-cheat programs. And then a guy like Shroud in front of 40,000 people jumps in the car of a cheater that's trying to stream snipe him. And literally, like, the Hogwarts... Literally, like, the scene from Harry Potter of them flying around, like, the Mini Cooper next to Big Ben... He's just riding around with this guy, and the guy's just killing everybody. <laughs> Man, Shroud got in trouble for that, right? Yeah, then he got a temporary ban and got, you know, got yelled at because enough people that, you know, are trolls reported him on the stream, even though hundreds of people can post clips, like, every single day to, like, the Reddit or the player announced forums of shit like this happening, and you go look at some of those guys that are still active, still playing. Although, to be fair, a lot of game companies will do massive ban waves. Those yeah. are like my favorite. Those are my favorite compilation videos from Rainbow Six Siege or whenever the new massive ban wave happens. And you just see in the top right corner of a game just the fucking, you know, like the Batan death march of this player was banned by Battle Eye. And you just see it going for like two and a half minutes, three minutes straight right. of just names, just scrolling eight deep. Just another Man, one, that's another a, one. You know? That's a great thing that uh, the Rainbow Six devs have seen, uh, have done now. Have you seen that? Are they banning With the, the, the chat thing? The, the racial slurs? Yeah. <laughs> you get banned after like just a few uh, a few times doing it. That's great. Yeah, it's uh you get a you'll get a temp ban I think for a couple hours. Right. And then another temp ban for like 48 hours. And then after so many strikes, yeah, it's permanent. Good. I mean, there's really no even like a devil's advocate for the other side. I uh I also remember loving like when I was playing Overwatch, I was, you know, playing on my PlayStation. But when I was heavy into like the Overwatch subreddit. Right was the threads of a massive blizzard bandwave going out and seeing like translated you know versions of all these chinese and korean guys complaining that they got banned for cheating and it's like this is the eighth copy i've bought and blah 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 it's like you've been banned eight times and had to pay for a key eight different times it's you know it's not like they're going to the bongs like the the net cafes where those guys are having to buy a key every now and then because someone gets one of their PCs banned. Some of these guys are getting banned on their own personal accounts and they're just complaining. Right. Are they getting banned Although, because they're doing terrible things? Yeah. Okay. Like this is all like cheaters, like cause cheating was rampant with aim bots initially in uh, rainbow six in overwatch in Fortnite. Like, uh, that first like two months of Fortnite were miserable if you're a PC player, and were pretty miserable for me because in the first month of it going live, now like two weeks of that was it in like like beta right. to founders who bought the Save the World before it went free to play. They were just filling the lobbies with anybody, huh. so there were occasions where I killed a guy I knew was playing on Xbox. And then there's a couple of scenarios of me running into a guy literally killing 35 people in a lobby with a gray SMG because he's just hitting immediate headshots because I got loaded in with a PC guy that was just, <laughs> I was just, you know, cheating his ass off. Yeah. But they got a lot of that shit under, under wraps. Yeah. It's always good when you see like you know, the rainbow six guys just saying, forget it. You're banned. Like <laughs> if you keep doing it, you're banned. Period. 
yeah, yeah. now it's now it's become a almost a mild pandemic of people trying to bait each other in the chat in the game to say something to get them banned. <laughs> That's become a thing now. I wonder if Ubisoft is gonna quickly or over time implement that technology in the rest of their games. I mean, how many other games do they have that have, you know, in-game chat? Uh, well, I mean, to do my, my weekly update of what the stuff I've been playing, I've been playing The Division. Yeah. I mean, that's got a bit of an issue, um, especially since I've been spending a lot of time in the Dark Zone. Uh, that's kind of the main thing I wanted to talk about this week. I've been, well, I've been completing my shields, which, uh, are you, how familiar are you with The Division? I, I mean, I played through it a lot at launch. Okay. It's just none of the after after like say the first month of the game being around all of the updates that have changed drastically. I don't know any of that stuff. So like the shields are kind of, kind of vaguely like you'll level them up and get you know something for the division two. Well, what it is is like so this week the first the first shield is easy. It's just I believe it's just unlocking the. Uh the main base which you'll do right right away after the tutorial or it might be upgrading it all the way i'm not sure but i had it as soon as i you know the shields came out Uh, another shield was complete all the weekly high value targets and that was a pain in the ass because i'm you know playing by myself i can't match make but i've just been doing it by myself and uh so i got all the weekly high value targets and what happens is you get a shield which is going to unlock something. I believe it's all cosmetic in the Division 2. But right now I have three or four shields. I have three shields because there's only four out. I have three shields, so I'm going to unlock the first shield tier and the second shield tier, I think. And then tomorrow I'll finish up my, my Dark Zone stuff, which is clear 25 landmarks in the Dark Zone, which are essentially dungeons. And I'll get another shield. And now I'll have the four shields from the first set, so I'll have something for sure unlocked in the Division 2 from having all of those. But what you get in the Division 1 is a patch, because you know, there's a lot of cosmetic stuff. You get a patch for your arm. And uh, you get a cachet, which for me so far has been so fucking good. I've got an exotic every time, and I've got a classified gear set. Not gear set, but gear piece every time. And man, last week Bob said something about you know less exotics in Destiny, and I didn't agree with him. And after playing the division so much and rarely coming across exotics, I have to agree because they change the game so much and it's so much fun. I have a exotic called the House that half of my magazine does like an extra fifty percent damage, or maybe it's a hundred percent damage. Something like that. And it like flips the magazine. Or it flips the magazine so next time that other half of the magazine is an extra whatever percent damage. And I also have uh what is it, Big Alejandro, which is an LMG where as long as I'm in cover, the damage ramps up. I have an automatic shotgun, which uh the more or the less shells you have in the magazine, the smaller the reticle gets. And I have a assault rifle that when I get crit shots, it heals me. So th- those are hmm. kind of the exotic weapons, and they are so much fun to use. So I, I now I kind of agree. And then the the yeah. classified gear, you know what you would get in the end game with the uh, with the division is the God, I can't remember the name of them. Is the, their gear sets? They're light green. And before, if you yeah. had four pieces of it, it gave you a big buff. Well, now with a classified gear set, if you have all six pieces, it gives you an even bigger buff. And supposedly one of the shields that we're going to get within the next few months is have a full set of classified gear. But it's very hard to come across. But every time you unlock a shield, you pretty much guaranteed to get a piece. So that's really nice. But uh, have you spent much time in the Dark Zone at all, or you just finished the game? Well, see, that was the thing is like, I never like I got to the very last like campaign mission and never finished it, because oh, by that right. point, because by that point everybody I knew that was playing it had already given up on it. 
Yeah, I think, I mean, I could really understand that when it first came out, but now it's such a good, such a complete game. Yeah, but that again, that was the problem, you know, like I expressed. It was like, it's like, I just, I just don't care about, you know, like shooting bots, you know. <laughs> it, 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 that's, that's the thing I've realized is like, I'm a, I'm a PvP guy. Well, you know, other, other than like single player experiences, it's just like, hey, I'd rather fight people. Yeah. That's what the Dark Zone is. The yeah. Zone and I is... played a fair amount of the Dark Zone. Okay. It was just, it was at the very beginning, at least, it was super insane of you stepping into the wrong area of the Dark Zone and there being, you know, guys like everybody was like, their health bar was gold. And oh, yeah. like you'd have like a super max rank sniper rifle, shoot a guy in the mouth and see like, a sixteenth of his health bar move, and then you get one shot. Like it was like insane, and that still happens. And I think the reason they do that is because they really want uh, random players to work together to clear out these landmarks. But it's also like this guy's helping me, but is he about to stab me in the back? And that yeah. intensity is like it's so fierce. But I, yeah, like I like said it. that. That situation has been the same problem I've had with, you know, especially traditional RPGs, but most RPGs in general over the years is like, I'm just getting tired of escalating math. Okay. Where it's like, where it's like, oh, hey, I bumped up a level. Now you just have, you know, 30,000 more HP I got to kill. So, (laughs) so like almost nothing really changed in the gameplay to the point to where like, especially with the the Japanese market and their love of idiotic grind I don't I don't get it to the point where on the PSP or the PS Vita and I think PS3 they had an RPG called Trillion where literally the entire gimmick was that the final boss had a trillion HP oh god <laughs> <laughs> like like the entire gimmick of that game was hey it's a grind that's like no like I don't care. I thought it was bad enough playing Halo on Legendary and yeah. having to shoot a grunt like four times in the mouth whenever it used to take one bullet. You know, like I think that's the one... big problem with uh, even with games like this. But that's what's nice about like the Underground, which is basically Diablo in the Division because it's you know random every time you go in it, the layout and the enemies and everything. But then you also have to uh, figure out which. Or rather, you have to introduce these modifiers that make the game harder. And I think they only make the game harder. I don't know if they make them easier. Um, That's something I'm going to be diving into probably next week because I think we're going to get a shield for the Underground. And the Underground is a ton of fun. But they also, they have a PvP mode called Last Stand. Yeah. Which again, I'm probably going to wait until they release a shield to really dive into that. Because right now, I... uh, I run around the dark zone a lot. That's been a lot of fun. Um, I've also got almost all the collectibles, and I am not a guy who gets collectibles. I hate it in games where there's like a million things to collect. For whatever reason, I just decided I wanted them all in division. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, they're all like audio and text. Like they're not even like super right. interesting. They are actually really interesting. The the story behind them because a lot of them are like yeah, like parts. the backstory. Yeah, if you're if you're willing to slog through them, I enjoyed them. Like the cell phone conversations, especially. I like I some of the details. A lot of them I didn't listen to because I was listening because it was it's kind of mindless just running around looking for the thing. So I had a yeah. podcast on. And I am gonna sit down and just listen to them all one day. But I've only got. A, a couple echoes to get. I got all the critical info. I think they're called. And I got all the, I got all the laptops and all the folders. And I just have to get, there's like 20 cell phones that I don't even see on the maps. I don't know what's up with that. I got to figure that out. Yeah. I remember I, I, I think I found all of them when I was playing just because I think I remember having that achievement. I think there would have been like 140 cell phones whenever you play. Cause I think they added like 20 at some point. Yeah. Well, I, I think, well, I think it was one of those games where you didn't have to 
like find them all to get the uh, trophy or achievement. That could be because I did get the you play achievement. Yeah, I think that's what it was. It's like I got enough to to hit the thing and get the you play bonus for my you play points. Yeah, so that would I actually make sense use those. That that's the achievement. Oh yeah, I do too. I I realize every time I open up like the 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 Ubisoft Club store. I'm sitting at like three, four hundred points just because I've played through every one of the stupid Assassin's Creed games and I've played all of the uh almost all of the other games over the years since they added Club or U Play as it used to be called. I spent a bunch of points on Assassin's Creed Origins on those exotic weapons. That that is so much fun in those games having those crazy weapons. You get a bunch of them from the store. Yeah, I remember using some of those, but I think I actually had like a pre-order bonus thing that was better. Oh, probably. Cause it, yeah, because I bought like the digital download code from Walmart on Black Friday for 29 bucks, And it came with all the other digital bonus stuff. And then wow. I bought the things with the... Uh, the uh you play points yeah i don't have the season pass so all the crazy weird like supernatural shit going on in the dlc i haven't gotten to and i never finished origins that's going to be like yeah. one of the things i get back to i so, might i like i enjoyed the game but that's not really for me like i i played it i was like this is really cool i don't think i'll go back to it um and my brother it's my brother's copy anyways so I like it for what it is. I can see I can see how people could get really into that game and like I might pick it up again eventually. There's just Yeah. There's other stuff I would rather spend time on. It's just it's the only one that uh well other than Rogue, which is like the Xbox 360 PS3 version that came out at the same time. Right, which was supposed to be Black really Flag good. came out, which has been remastered now and available on the other platforms now, but other than that one, Origins would be the only Assassin's Creed game that exists that I didn't finish. Oh, wow. It was supposed to be, like, the best one. Well, it's just the longest one. Is it? By okay. a fucking mile. Because it really does kind of take a lot of, like, they said their influence from The Witcher. Yeah, there's okay. a bunch of idiotic side quests that have some <laughs> cool moments. Yeah. Like, the side quests aren't impactful they don't mean anything 99 percent of the time but they really make you like the character like sure you really see like the the old dad the good man trying to help his community in a lot of those stories and then there's some really weird stuff where you're finding you know alligators eating people you know in caves under a temple yeah and i know like today uh, I was messaging Bob. And have you played Octopath Traveler yet? Or are you going? To uh, play? no. I mean, it's, I, I, I. <laughs> it, it seems so torn about it. It, 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 it scratches every itch I ever wanted for so many years of my life. Yeah. But then it, I just hit a point in my life where like that switch turned off. Damn. Of. I want to give it a shot, but like I was telling Bob one time about, you know, random, random battles need to die. Random encounters okay. in any video game well, need, need to fucking die. That's something we'll save for next week because next week, one of our <laughs> big topics is Pokemon needs to evolve. Yeah. And that's the thing is I saw, uh, Hey, Octopath Traveler has random encounters. I'm like, oh, God damn it. Killed they did you. so much right. Yeah, I'll, so much, I'll agree. Right, and but, I don't want it. Yeah, Bob's been playing that a lot, and he was telling me like I got this far, and I've only got this much done. And I was like, man, that sounds like a really long game. I don't know about that. And I did the little asterisk, like like I was doing an action thing, like puts fifty more hours in the division. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh man, I wish I had the time to play that. Yeah, he I says. I don't understand As he's on why a six hour grind to the division. Yeah. I have thoughts like that. Like I just I couldn't get into a game that long. And then I'll sit there and play the division for hours. 
I mean, it used to be Destiny. It used to be Stardew before that. Minecraft before that. So, I don't know. Apparently, but, see, the, here's the thing, is that mentally and for your habits, there's no investment you have to make to spend the time on the division. You've got to go and learn a whole new style. You've got to pay more attention. Right. It, it, you've got you've got to invest some more so much more of yourself for the new experience. And that's why, you know, WoW just put out another goddamn expansion pack what today or oh, yesterday. Is it out? Yeah, it just okay. went live, I want to say. That's why Bob's was... not on the show. He's not doing adult yeah. shit. <laughs> <laughs> He's Damn not doing adult shit. I knew it. That man's out there fighting horde. I'm open. Yeah, up I was right watching. Uh, I was watching a, a Fortnite player like this morning, and him and his buddy were getting into an argument about World of Warcraft. Jeez. <laughs> and then he read off the tweet. You know, such and such is live now. Yeah, I guarantee that's what... No, I can't guarantee that's what Bob's doing, but... <laughs> Odds are high. I'd be pissed. It wouldn't surprise me, though. Actually, if, next week when we do the podcast, he might be just playing while while doing it. Yeah, I'd be like, huh? What was that? No, it says, <laughs> he, it says he's mobile. Uh, but yeah, going going back to what you were saying, and the thing I kind of made a counterpoint on... Uh, on destiny with the exotics yeah. is, you know, like the point I made there is the thing I would imagine is going to make the division too interesting. If they, you know, pay attention to what they're already doing is, you know, Bob had said, you know, there, there's too many exotics. And I said, there's just not enough that matter because it's, a, it's an especially bad problem on destiny. As far as like their patch and update rate, is, oh, hey, this one gun is super useful and everything else kind of sucks right now, so then you see everybody using that one thing. Yeah. And that that's, yeah, that's definitely a thing that sucks about the about Destiny is there's a meta, and you kind of have to use the meta, and I hate meta so much. And that's one lovely thing about the Division is there's not really a meta. Right now there is in PvP, you know, it's the house. Just run the house. Yeah. But I think that's kind of different. But I also played PvP without the house, and I did fine. So it's not even a required thing. Yeah, it's not like the de- it's not like in Destiny, or you know, in Fortnite for a while with the uh, double pump, as it was called. Yeah. Where right. If you're not using the meta, you're not going to be as effective as you can be. Yeah, that sucks when games are like that. We, I had a discussion with somebody. We were we we're gonna start playing uh, Borderlands Two again to finish it up, and there was well, well, we have to play through the game. We have to get these weapons, and then like, wait, 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 what are we doing? Well, when what are we, we do- play the when we play Borderlands, we have to do this, 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 and this. I'm like, no, wait, no, we don't. We're just playing Borderlands. Well, the meta for the boss fights, and I just lost it. I was like. I don't, Borderlands is not my meta game. Borderlands is my dumb shoot shit game. Like, <laughs> do not introduce yeah. a meta into the frickin' Borderlands. That was always the interesting thing for me talking to my buddies is because the entire time of Borderlands 1 and 2 being relevant, I didn't have home internet. Damn. So, well, basically from 2002 to probably 2015. Yeah. I didn't have home internet access. Did you live in the middle of the desert? Well, you're in in the middle of the country. Yeah. <laughs> Same thing. I, yeah. Like people don't understand how much giant parts of the South are third world countries, basically. <laughs> you know, Should it's we... like, oh, hey, there's, there's nobody out here. There's nothing to do. There's no communications. Hell no. Like literally at my at my house I lived in for a little over ten years before I moved to where I live now. There was no cell phone service and no home internet. Is it still like that? Like predominantly. Know? Jeez. Yeah, we went for, to we're house people. hunting right now, and we went to a place the other day, and we realized, oh, there's no cable out here. It's only satellite. Nope. <laughs> Not buying yeah. this house. But uh. That was the thing. He's like, yeah, everybody out there has satellite, and 
almost none of them even have cell phones because a lot of those people out there, rural people that have no use for it or are old and don't care. Yeah. A little but yeah, so when I would talk to so many of my friends when they were playing, you know, Borderlands 1 and 2 and I'm just sitting at the house just playing it by myself solo, it's like... Yeah, whenever we found out this duplication glitch, blah, 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 it really ruined the game yeah. for us. Then don't fucking do it. You have the choice to not fuck this up for yourselves. Right. You figured it out. It ruined Borderlands 1. Then like a year and a half later, you figure out how to do it again in Borderlands 2. You repeat the process, and then you fuck up Borderlands 2 for yourself. It's like, yeah. what are you doing? There's no meta here. Just play. Nope, apparently there is a meta. Yeah, I guess some of the, the DLC they came out with, like the little DLCs are just like super hard boss fights. And like one of our guys wanted to play the sniper and he was told, no, you can't play him. He won't do enough damage. And it's like, no, fuck that. We're not going to play Borderlands like it's WoW. Like yeah. I know it's like an MMO shooter type of thing, but no, we're not. That's crazy. Yeah, but, I remember the, uh, the launch of Borderlands 2. The ninja guy, Zero was his name. Yep. Was like insanely broken. He's still like I'd, I'd roll into my buddy's house and I'd sit down. And when I didn't have the internet, I'd hang out at a lot more of my friends' houses. So, like, half, was, half of a friend of mine's achievements on his Xbox are uh, earned by me. Yeah. Like, most of his, like, prestiges and, like, Call of Duty and Max Ranks and, like, Gears of War and all those other games were predominantly me in some of those guys cases but uh i would see him playing borderlands 2 and i'd be just sitting there having a drink and i'd see everybody in the lobby all being zero all phasing into whatever zone and just like one hit killing things like zero's fun what i was like why no they were one hit killing bosses damn with like whatever the exploit was to like super ramp up like the power scheme yeah, to where like he would hit somebody for like Five nines. That's boring. <laughs> but yeah, I was like, why are you doing this? It reminded me when you were talking about, yeah, you know, they're like trying to set up, like, you won't get this, you won't get that. People playing the meta. It reminded me of how mad I got. And I immediately, like, unfriended a guy. I never talked to him again when I was playing a lot of Payday 2. Yep. I've been on this path so there, as well. <laughs> so there was an exploit in Payday 2 to basically revive the guy as long as he didn't go from being uncrouched, he was invincible. Oh, wow. The, yeah, this was a thing this kid kept trying to do. We were doing these like insane high-level bank heists, and I was rolling around. It was during a patch where like the there's like a little short 12-gauge shotgun called a locomotive. That thing was a death ray. Like, <laughs> So I was already kind of using a gun that was kind of crazy, and I had my entire build set up to where, like, I could pretty much just like, you know, hee 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 hee, just skate through. If I if I sprinted, like, almost no bullets ever hit me, and then I'd like one tap, like guys in like body armor, like just one to the face, and they'd be down, and I'm just hee 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 hee. I, but then this guy would just sit there like, "Hey, uh, let me get down and okay, save me, revive me," and then he'd just be sitting there in the corner, just crouch walking. And I finally figured out why he was wanting to do that is because he couldn't take damage, so he wanted to guarantee we didn't waste time on one of these missions because we died. So he was just sitting there, just walking around like an asshole, just crouched, just with a silent pistol, just. Blip, 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 blip. The most boring thing is like, no, I'm not doing that ever again. Yep. That, that's how, unfortunately, I've experienced payday is just you have to do everything very boring. You have to do everything very precise and, you know, take so you're saying of whatever destiny thing. raids. <laughs> I've only done part of the destiny raids. So I don't know. But probably. Oh, yeah. Like, I never did any of the destiny raids, but the toxicity I've seen when I used to still check out the Destiny subreddit, I'd see videos of guys making compilations of people they met in LFG groups just being absolute fucks. 
and uh my my roommate my buddy's playing and i'd come in like it'd be like three hours later and they're still on the goddamn vaults of glass and they're like 70 percent done i'm like Never once will I ever. <laughs> uh, the only time we did a raid, we had some some really good guys try to like shepherd us or sherpa us. Uh, they were super helpful. We just didn't. I don't think we had the gear or the knowledge to get it done. But I mean, they're neat. They're they're really elaborate puzzle things. It's definitely different from what, uh, from what the rest of the game is. Yeah. Yeah, I, I knew it was a problem. I probably won't ever do them. I knew it was a problem with what we're talking about, about people only playing to the path, only playing to the meta, is the amount of like communities and LFGs I saw specifically going out of their way to teach people how to play it instead of just shepherding them through so they didn't ruin the fun of actually doing the thing. Like People having to go all out of their way to not just be those mechanical fucks just yeah. wanting to get just wanting to get the result and don't care about, you know, the the path there. Right. Yeah, no, the guys that we played with, they wanted us to understand what was going on, which was nice. And that that's how it should be done. Yeah. I uh I also immediately like I'm down to like play games with pretty much anybody. Like I'll join in on random duos and squads occasionally on Fortnite. I'll hit up people like that like, hey, hit me up on PS4 and play some games. You know, if I'm watching like a streamer or I see somebody on a Reddit. Like I'm willing to go out of a way to talk to people and help people out. But then immediately the amount of times, especially guys that really play a lot of Call of Duty, it's like, oh I gotta go uh do some stuff on my other account. Goodbye. Your stats don't fucking matter. <laughs> Nobody fucking cares about you. Yeah. Quit smurfing and move on with your life and enjoy the thing. Yeah, that's crazy. It drives it drives me insane. It's like cuz well, well, what what I was going to say is at least on like PS4 and Xbox 1. Yeah. The fucks figured out sub accounts so as long as you uh leave your primary account that has like your playstation plus or your xbox live and you make a sub account you can go be as toxic and cheat be as much of a fucking shithead as you want on your sub accounts and have no repercussions yeah your sub account gets banned or reported or kicked out of a game you just delete that off your Xbox or your PlayStation, make a new one, and keep going on. You don't have to you don't have to risk anything to be a fuck. That's gotta get worse now that they have the family gold thing. Yeah, that's what that's what I'm or, saying. Sub accounts yeah. get the you know, all of the benefits of the primary account with the access. Yeah. They can play all your games. Is it like that on PlayStation? Yeah, it's it was it was like that on PlayStation from like the first year it's been out like that's been a thing for years and then finally xbox did the family goal or whatever oh that's why they did it probably then yeah pretty much it's but yeah like that was the thing is you would just see a random guy like the mouse and keyboard kids with the adapters on rainbow six siege are especially the worst at it i bet to the to the point to where they intentionally go out of their way to make troll names <laughs> to the point where I think I mentioned this once before. It's like there's a kid who is, you know, like max rank, you know, platinum or diamond or whatever. And the guy was just mad at, you know, this player because his name was literally Mouse and Keyboard. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> because even though apparently, you know, they've made tools that can detect like third party adapters and reject those inputs and all this other stuff to stop this being a thing. Game devs would have to implement it into their game engines. Yeah. And update like almost nobody does a, a mid cycle of a game engine update. Like, I think we talked about this last time. The only two I can think of in years has been player unknowns 
and uh, Friday the 13th because they both updated their versions of Unreal Engine to enable better server stuff. Uh, so, yeah, the, I wonder if did Final Fantasy 14 do that when they completely rebuilt? Uh, I'm not sure, but that's a, a re-release of a game. That's not a just an update mid-cycle. Like, the game's been out, and here's a massive update that could potentially break everything. Well, they completely rebuilt that game. Yeah, but and they also resold it as a new game and re-released it as a new game. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, you you couldn't access the old content anymore, and you got like a discount. I want to say on Final oh, Fantasy fourteen. Well, I, I there was all sorts of like upgrade programs. I think or people got people that already owned it got it free. And then it went back up to full price, essentially, if you were trying to buy it huh. since it was the Realm Reborn, yeah. which that's a game that apparently is still doing well and people yeah. still really like where they're doing it. I played it. I didn't care for it. <laughs> I, but I don't like MMOs. Yeah, me either. I played to find what I like. I played a fair amount of WoW when it was releasing because I was spending a lot of time regularly at somebody's house that had internet. And I get to sit there next to my cousin, bring my uh, laptop at the time, and he'd have his PC, and we just bullshit before yeah. I went home after work for a few hours. Well, we've done an hour of bullshitting here. We uh, we talk about a little bit of what we've been playing other than our regular <laughs> weekly games. <laughs> You've been playing uh, The Escapist too. Yeah, I played a bunch of stuff. Uh, I bought the early access for the next Humble Monthly Bundle just because $12 was the cheapest price I've seen for a hat in time. And I wanted that. And then I had also grabbed a couple things from, you know, this Twitch Prime Day, some of those free games. Yeah, I yeah, just got Tyranny too. today. I want to play Tyranny still. So I'm going to play through Tyranny. Yeah. Yeah, Escapist 2 was one of the games included in the Humble Bundle. And I started up, and I wasn't aware initially when I went to play it that so much of that game is really kind of the online component. Really? There's, like, online lobbies, essentially, where the other prisoners are other players. What? Yeah. They, this like, just got a lot more interesting to me. Yeah, like, every every, like, prison is kind of its own instance map. And, and then it listed then it listed uh other people that are in that prison that if you were in an online lobby you could potentially like instance into their game, I guess. I just said, Hey, I'm probably not gonna play too much of this because I kinda didn't enjoy the intro of playing through like the tutorial basically. So I doubt I wanna get invested in an online yeah, you know, lobby. But yeah, like everything was just like, oh, here's this map version 2.0. I was like, really? What the hell? So is the like game was... still about collecting materials and escaping in different ways? Yeah, they like they just apparently from what I could tell, they just increased like What's it's just, you know, there? scaled it up. Like they uh okay. added so many more conditions, so many more combinations of things, like uh based on you going and reading books not increasing your intelligence. You have more blueprints. You can now make random prison MacGyver shit. So, like, the first thing I found in, like, the tutorial was a bar of soap and a sock. So that's my weapon. I just put the bar of soap inside the sock, and now I have a flail. <laughs> so yeah. I just went up behind a guy and just smashed his fucking skull in with a brick of soap. I might and then took his keepers too at some point. Like I said, it's part of that bundle. It's twelve bucks. You get a hat in time. That's the lowest it's ever been. Yeah, I might because I'm. Well, you gave me Conan. I guess I can just give that to someone else. Yeah, uh, the, it also came with Conan Exiles. I was like, I have less than zero interest in Conan <laughs> Exiles. 
I like, want, dude, I want a new survival game to play. And I even looked at it. And I was like, oh, Troll gave me Conan. And I looked at the store page. And I was like, I don't know if I actually want to play this. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, hey, man, have at it. Because that's the problem is like kind of going back to the thing about like Octopath. It's like there's a certain level of just like tedium investment. I'm just not down to make anymore. Yeah. Unless I'm really interested. Because, you know, with Octopath, so much of that is apparently, you know, a lot of people are getting shit on their reviews that there is kind of like a a minor combined everything all together at the end if you play through all eight stories. Yeah. And it's like, man, that's a lot of fucking game to get to something that probably won't live up to it. As in my experience, no RPG or no JRPG has ever been worth the amount of hours put into it. Damn. Yeah, I mean, even even the great ones. Well, short of like, like Chrono Trigger, because you can get through that in like ten hours. Like it, it's 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 a reasonable length. There's no idiotic, pointless grinding for the sake of just getting your level up. Yeah. So you're not like dying every time you go into a boss fight, because especially in the the golden age of JRPGs, balance was a fucking, you know, it was a lottery. It's like, oh hey. You know, I'm, I'm just sitting here. I'm just like skating on these hoes, like I got butter on my feet. <laughs> yeah. And then all of a sudden, this guy just one hit my entire party with a death spell. Right. What the fuck? Just out of nowhere, this one guy just murders you every time. But uh, yeah. I don't know, man. It's just like there's... I'll never forget, and I'll, I'll I'll probably get a lot of shit from this in the comments and shit. Playing Final Fantasy VII getting to a certain point and just couldn't beat it and you know of course you know told my buddy about it brought my saver over to his house and he's like oh you're not high enough level like oh oh i'll explain why i can't beat it how do i get to a higher level we'll go back and just play these missions over and over again oh no (laughs) no yeah (laughs) i'll play socom instead thanks yeah yeah uh, later probably spyro the dragon or something yeah, so, some uh, some other silly thing. But yeah, that was the thing is especially like any of the the Dragon Quest games. I think I said it last time too. It's like those are the most Japanese fucking sadomasochistic. Yeah, and that's like, why like I want to get Dragon Quest Builders, but I don't know if it's Builders is like that. Well, no, Builders is just like poorly structured quest logs over minecraft yeah <laughs> yeah because because i remember uh the complaint of you know a few people like colin before you know he left kind of funny like when dragon quest builders is out and he's playing it on his vita he's like i don't have a way to like go back and read these quest logs so it, it was like a pain oh. in the ass to keep up with what he was trying to do i think dragon quest builders 2 addresses a lot more of those problems because I think that's the one that's on Switch. No, it's it's the same game. It's the first one. Oh, it's the first one? Yeah. Ooh, I don't know if they ever fixed the the, the RPG problem of that game. Yeah, and that's why I haven't got it yet because I know there are issues with it. Um, cause I, what I really want right now, and I guess do you have anything else you wanted to mention about Escape and Stew before I go into my game? Uh... Not really. Like I said, it's just like I appreciate what they're doing. I loved like the the small details of like prisoners' names, their backstories, you know, all that weird shit. All the crazy things you could craft out of what you could craft to get out, like digging up or cutting up into tunnels, you know, all sorts of stuff. But it's like, no, not for me. Not yeah. for me. <laughs> but I think I finally found a game that's going to it's my scratch of like RPG ish crafting town building game. And that's Moonlighter. Um, I only played it for like an hour right before this. Cause like I've owned it for like a couple months, but I haven't had the time to play it. And I pretty much decided like, all right, I'm playing it now. Like <laughs> it's, it's, it's time. Yeah. Um, but man, it's fucking cool. Have you looked at it? Yeah. I've, I've seen, I've seen some of the actual like just raw gameplay parts. Yeah, I not really looked into like the the store seller stuff part. So because there's other games that 
I've yeah. seen that do like the run a dungeon shop and then go into a dungeon. It's just this is the only right. one I've seen that's kind of like a Metroidvania or old Metroid style game. Kind of. It's basically uh, a rogue light like, and I know last week I said I was tired of them, but this one has gives me an interesting. Uh, it, it's different other than the other roguelikes. What it is, is you go into the dungeon, you get as far as you can, kill as many things as you can, collecting as many artifacts and other little, little things to sell in your shop. And then when you go out to the next day, you put these th- items out on the table, and as far as I can tell, it doesn't tell you what they're worth. So you just price them however you want, a customer will walk over to it and be sad or be happy. Or I'm going to guess the one with like the coins in their eyes means like, Oh shit, this is cheap. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and that's what it is. So it's, it's that, that loop of dungeon, get artifacts. You do kill bosses eventually and selling things to upgrade the town. Cause what it is, I think you like fix up a building and a blacksmith moves in or you fix up a building and a, a mage moves in and you can upgrade your shop. You can buy nicer cash registers, bigger tables, all that type of thing. And once I realized that all that was in the game, I was like, yes, yeah. I need more of this. <laughs> I'll probably be playing after this pod, or after I edit this podcast. Yeah. And that'll be up. Because, yeah, I had seen, like, the synopsis of what, like, the story behind it is because I watched the trailer when it popped up in the store Yeah. on PlayStation of, like, you're, like, you're the last person still in the town like the the dungeon was there all the people came to the dungeon and business wore out people stopped going to the dungeon and your store started to go out of business and you're going in to the dungeon trying to revive the business pretty much and trying to revive the town yeah the town's you know ghost towning like this town i live in (laughs) because it's a pointless town in the middle of nowhere in the south (laughs) Yeah, it's, it's pretty much that's what it is. You try and find items, and I guess if you sell too many of an item, the price will go down. So you need to like kind of hoard it a little bit, and let the price go up. And I'm excited to get like way into it. And I, I love the whole being able to upgrade things aspect of a game. Feeling like I have real progression. That's why I love Stardew. So I, I am very excited to start playing that. The only other thing that I played, and I actually have a video out on it, or it's coming out, I'm not sure, is Jotun. Have you played that? Oh, yeah, the the weird Viking, like, Zelda kind of game? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, the game is super pretty, and... It's. I gotta play more of it. This is, again, I did it for a video, and I went into it knowing nothing about it. But well, you'll see right here. I keep moving. Keep moving. Yeah, I, I played through a couple of uh, like the first two or three bosses before I just lost interest. Yeah, I, I didn't did, like the way. Yeah, they like, played. Right, me too. I will say this scene in particular was amazing to me. Because I was playing the game, I was basically, I was down there fighting all those vines and stuff you can see, and I kind of got lost, I was like, I'm not really sure where to go, and I think I need to go back. So I ended up back at the beginning on accident, and then when I got back up to this point, I was like, oh, that is where I was. Yeah. <laughs> I was able to find yeah. where to go. Yeah, you're actually looking at the map you're about to go walk on. I just thought that was Absolutely amazing. I've never seen that done in a game before or since. Except for, I guess, Zelda. That creepy fucker. (laughs) That eyeball (laughs) follows you. But yeah, I just... The game is really neat. This might be one that, like, way later down the line I pick back up and play. But the gameplay is... I don't know if it changes at all. I don't know if it's... No, it it, it doesn't really get much better than where it's at. Cause I think this was a like a student project at like an actual college in like Norway or Sweden or somewhere. Okay. And I like that mythology, that Norse mythology. So. Yeah, because it is all told by people of 
the the heritage of this mythology. That's why they speak a different language when she talks. Right. I hate those little puff things. Yeah. Yeah, the game is brilliant. I I, I really want to play more of it. I just I just wish I enjoyed playing it more. Yeah, me too. I I'll probably give it another shot eventually. Yeah, it kind of reminded me just like as far as like wishing it played better was the yeah. uh like what what we had talked about with uh Bloodstained Curse of the Moon. Yes. It's like when you realize, oh no, it is that game. It's not like like the thing I mentioned about uh Shovel Knight. Shovel Knight plays the way you remembered it. But it's improved over the years with all the knowledge of gameplay mechanics and control. And you go back to Bloodstain, Curse the Moon, you're like, oh no, I just jumped in a direction. And I've got no control until I land. Yeah, I started playing that again, and I because you you think you were telling me that if you kill the characters, you get an ability. Yeah, the Zangetsu run. I killed what's her face, and all I get is like this weird quarter slash. It doesn't even seem yeah, to the, do anything. Yeah, you you gotta like get through all three of the other characters nope. before like it gets not super doing interesting. <laughs> not doing it. And it's so stupid because there's so many areas I can't get to now. I thought I would have yeah. her jump. I don't no, it's it's that. minor upgrades that once you get all of them, it then makes a big difference. But yeah, it it just makes the game harder to do that run. Yep, not doing it then. <laughs> it it, it does it do, it doesn't simplify anything. It only it only expands your your base palette of you know structure and movement. Okay. But yeah, the uh, the other thing I thought about, you know, another game I played a while back that I just wish it played better was uh, this this weird thing. Way Forward uh, they make a lot of cool games, but they made the Mummy Demastered. I think we talked about before. Oh, here it is. Here is Trolls' weird ass game of the week. So yeah, when that awful like Tom Cruise Mummy movie came out. A licensed movie game came out for it. A uh, straight up pixel art, awesome retro rad. music. Yeah, it looks rad, and the music is fucking dope. It's just, man, I can't stand playing it. Oh, that's sad. Because it's one of those things. Apparently, if you slog through to the point to get like the upgrade for your. Uh, so I have a, a massive pet peeve of games where the dodge doesn't have iframes. Okay. So then it's just kind of pointless. And so this game, frames. yeah, yeah. So like you're just dodging and then hitting people and taking damage. You're like, to what fucking point does the dodge do if jumping right. is going to be better? Eighty nine, ninety nine percent of the time, like the dodge is really just to get like distance in some occasions and doesn't help me with anything. Yeah, there was, I think it, it must have been like a Dark Souls type game I was playing and I kept having that problem and then somebody was telling me like, oh, well you're not invincible when you dodge. I'm like, that's stupid! Like, <laughs> Made me so mad! I, yeah, it drove me crazy and apparently, like, once you get to a certain point, you get like a teleport move instead of your dodge and then okay. that actually works like the way it should from the fucking beginning it's like no you're playing you're playing as a generic soldier and you're playing through like some basically related incidents through the course of the movie oh there's there's the important guy (laughs) yeah so yeah it has um like the likeness of yeah uh what's his name i can't remember his Uh, name Russell Crowe. Yes. And it has like the likeness of some of the other people in the movie and like cool like 8-bit portrait or 16-bit portrait. But it's just like, man, I just really wish like the initial gameplay part of this worked better because I got to like a big boss fight down the subway and like he has like these attack patterns and you just got to remember like old school Contra. I'm just like, jump here, duck there, duck there, jump here, jump here. 
and you die really fast because like your your reflex is to roll and then it does nothing <laughs> and then you're like fuck now i'm dead yeah <laughs> and i gotta go back to a reload point and i th- i think when i played it i just didn't have the patience to try to break my roll habit yeah well that, i think that that's my big thing. problem with it it should be a thing <laughs> and yeah like i said games. I figured out after the fact, talking to other people that had played it, it's like, oh yeah, once you get the dash, you know, it's, why the fuck did I have to go through like a lot of horse shit from what I could tell to to get the thing to work the way it should? Yeah, no thanks. So this looks like uh, another game you mentioned that you played is Cave Story. Yeah, Cave Story is it's a weird game. Like the backstory behind Cave Story of like how it started how it became a game, then how it got published again as Cave Story Plus is the one I had played, which is just this game with like mild remastering, essentially, which Cave Story Plus has the ability to turn it back to this mode. Okay. With these these graphics, that music. Okay, well, this, so this is, is the, like ver- the this, this is the Cave Story Plus version, yeah. Oh, okay. There, there's, I was like, I, I, it's been so long since I played deep into that game to remember what in game shit started looking like. This looks cool. Where, yeah, it's a, it's a great game. It's on the Switch. If you want to pay that Nintendo tax, I'm pretty sure I own this <laughs> on Steam. Yeah, all this thing has been just fucking thrown out on Steam. But uh, yeah, I I realized when I bought the Humble Bundle to get Hat in Time, and I recovered my Humble Bundle account and get all that set back up because I hadn't logged into it in like four years or three years. <laughs> They're like, hey, is this really you? I said, yeah, it's me. I'm just dusting the cobwebs out of here. Relax. But uh, I realized I still had a bunch of Steam keys from old Humble Bundles I had bought I'd never redeemed. Yeah. And this is one of them because I'd given a bunch of those Steam keys out to people, much like when I gave you that Conan Exiles. I was like, I'm not going to use this, and I don't want another pointless thing. I'm never going to touch in my Steam library, like most Steam users. <laughs> guilty, I am guilty. Yeah. So I started this back up, and I was like, man, I forgot how much I dislike the base mechanics of this game oh, shit. for how much I like the game. I was like, I, I was like, I don't enjoy this. Why do I enjoy this? <laughs> right. Was it just like the way it, the weapons work, or yeah, the way the way the the jumping works, the way the weapons work, mm-hmm. like it's like super floaty, and it's like kind of based on like the. I want to say it's based on like how long you hold the button, how high your jump goes, and like the mechanics of picking stuff up, like the simplicity of the controls. The story's weird and is the main reason people I know really like this game. And I think that's why I stuck in and played it. But yeah, it's just, I don't know, man. It's, it's like, I, I, I enjoyed it and I remember fondly of when I actually played it. But like dusting it back off again out of nowhere and starting it back up years later, it's like, oh boy. <laughs> yeah, I, I I I don't have the interest in this anymore. But yeah, I, I love like the look. I love it how. Uh... I'll probably play this for Project One Sixty Eight. Seems like every week you give me something to play. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like like I've told you before when we first kind of started chatting on on Discord when I first joined up and started talking to you guys is like if it's at one point been like less than five dollars on psn since like 2012 yeah i probably played it a little bit and you played a lot of garbage yeah and i've dug up a lot of great stuff out of there it's just man there's a lot of garbage out there to play yeah absolutely i'll tell you one that i dug up that seemed like absolute garbage i totally forgot about this is the calling of the crows. 
I was going to say, are you talking about the awful Battle Royale? And then oh. you finish your sentence, I was like, oh. Here it is. This game is a this is the goofiest tower defense game I've ever played. It's basically you are an old man with a shotgun on your farm, and there are zombie cows. And you can every game every level you have a certain amount of money. You can buy upgrades for your ammunition, for your shotgun, or uh, you actually your middle thing is God is helping you, and you just gotta protect your farm and I think one thing I found neat about it was you know these games usually have lanes and this one's yeah. really hard to determine the lanes so you're accurate so the accuracy is a little more important than normal yeah I see that like the the amount of missed shots here yeah and then you can get like that second ammunition is a, is a buckshot so it spreads out a bit more and there are faster zombie cows. I'm assuming there's going to be totally different enemies eventually. Uh, that first power in the middle that God helps you out with is just a giant saw that comes out of your barn. There's um, a sentry turret. It's just oh, there's a saw. But it's just the goofiest game that I had a blast playing. It looks like total garbage on Steam. I love it. And that's it. I mean, it doesn't. You just protect your your farm, as far as I can tell. Yeah, that that looks that looks terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna say it's not, but it's much better yeah. than the, some games that I've. Yeah, played. it 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 looks much more amusing initially, but wow, it does it's like, what it set out to do well. That uh, that art style reminds me of early 90s liquid tv animation shorts and mtv absolutely it reminded <laughs> me of like kind of how to describe it but like the first thought is like grindhouse comic books like really dark it, it, gory kind of it reminded me of most of the artwork that's ever been on a cannibal corpse album cover yeah absolutely or um <laughs> oh my god or who the hell uses the weird zombie guy as their logo uh, evil. Uh, uh, Eddie from a uh, yeah. Iron Maiden. Th- yes, Eddie. That's what that looks like an Iron Maiden game to me. Yeah. Which there's an Iron Maiden mobile game now, which is that's terrifying. What well, doesn't have a mobile game at this point? That's fair. Even Fortnite does. Yeah, and it's idiotically successful, like Fortnite. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, one game that I, we've talked about this on the podcast but you wanted to talk about it again with slap city i haven't played yeah, much I, uh, since i played that initial time i want to play more though yeah it's 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 again one of those games where if you don't have a reason to play it yeah it's like it's like how many people really play smash brothers alone yeah like who, who sits around their house and offline Single player Smash Bros. That's probably why I won't get it. I might get it as soon as it comes out. I don't know. Yeah, it, torn on that. It's just I played a few rounds because one of the guys I work with had uh bought it when it was on the Steam sale for like five bucks, and I and I and I slapped him around a couple of times. But yeah, it's just like they they're adding more stuff. They're, you know, adjusting down to the individual frames of animation every time. Read their patch notes. Huh. It's like, oh, hey, this thing, you know, now uh, completes in 37 frames. Or instead of 42, or that's now it takes insane. longer. Because that's how, like, for a game as basic. Yeah. The, the you know, the moment-to-moment accuracy of things is where the meta is is where like the skill gap the skill ceiling is well, i feel it like just... that's interesting that they're doing that because like if they can figure out all that stuff early this early on i feel like the rest of the game will become much much better yeah cuz there's still i want to say eight characters or they they i don't think they've added any new characters since you've played or since I've played. Okay. But uh, they intend to get up to 25, I want to say. 
That's awesome. So let's see. As of July six, uh, Slap City point eight point five is live. Text now work as intended. So that's basic. That's the same basic patch notes I remember reading. Of you know, it'll do increase range of uh, this thing, change detail active frames from eight to ten to six to eight. You know, like super in the weeds. Yeah. You know. Well, I think that's what you kind of sign up for when you buy a game this cheap. Yeah. This early. Well, also for the community that would play one of these games seriously. Like, yeah, this is the kind of shit people care about that have played, you know, Smash for years and are wanting, you know, a good Smash clone. Yeah, I hope they go far with it. Yeah, because uh, they they added another map or two from the initial day I played, and yeah, they got they got some work ahead of them. But I do love the fact that they already have uh, you can toggle on you know hit boxes to show on screen at all times. Okay. So you so you can learn yourself like when you're in a fight if you. Uh, save a replay of a fight, you can go back in and pause it and go frame by frame of the match with the hitboxes turned on and see why the fuck you just got knocked into, you know, three zip codes away. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> it's like, I just, I just jumped in the air and did my dodge roll out of midair to get away from this guy. How the hell did he hit me with this other thing and win this fight? You can just sit there and just hit the button move a frame forward like an old school slideshow just click 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 so you can really study those mechanics which are you know the things any of the dorks i know that went to you know smash brothers melee tournaments yeah they can tell you the exact number of frames it takes for jigglypuff's down b to complete yeah it's like you fucking dorks (laughs) i love you for being dorks yeah (laughs) I wish I could get into a game like that. Yeah, and like you said, why you hadn't played much, and it's like if you don't have somebody to play with, is the online functionality like good and working? Uh, from my limited experience of queuing in with randoms, the people that had decent ping, everything went smooth. Well, we might have to play one day then. It's just when you queue into random lobbies in a peer-to-peer, you know, environment like that. Somebody, you know, on a satellite internet connection using a 1980s modem (laughs) is always going to fuck that up. It's like, how how are you playing Steam right now? Oh, I put my my phone on the IDAT ringer or whatever those fucking things are called. He's playing war games with me. He's like, yeah, instead of smoke signals. It's like I, I remember years ago encountering a kid trying to play Halo 2 from Indonesia. <laughs> no. That's crazy. Wow, dude, dude, it was insane because Halo 2 had the ability for the proximity voice chat on by default. Yeah. So I just heard a kid just speaking a random language <laughs> and I just went up to him and I was like, Hey, uh, where are you from? And in broken, broken English, he explained to me he was in this town in Indonesia, and I was like, that's insane. No wonder why it looks like you're a 1930s, you know, newsreel. The frames I'm seeing scoot by. Yeah, there's a lot of Asian players in the division for some reason. Yeah, the, uh, I think I need to switch over on Fortnite to West Coast to give it a shot for a while because East Coast, I have better ping. Hmm. But it's filled with, like, sweaty Brazilian kids. Oh, God. Because they don't want to be on their servers because, one, I guess maybe their servers are unreliable, but predominantly in most games I've come across, the the low ping, the, the bad ping gets favored. That sucks. And so many online shooters, the guys with bad ping on games like Overwatch, on like Rainbow Six. It's like, 
I was behind a wall and I built a wall and now yeah. I'm dead and looking at the guy standing on the other side of the wall that's full health. I was like, you son of a bitch. Yeah, that's always fun. <laughs> the server favors the weak. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that's pretty much it for this week for us. Uh, hopefully next week, or actually, I know next week, Bob will be back to talk about Octopath Traveler, and we're going to talk us more about Pokemon. Uh, you don't play Pokemon, right? Uh, well, I played back in the day. Okay. I I played, you know, I, I believe my path went red, yellow, and then I played silver, yep, I want to say. that was my path, and then I played X, didn't like it, and I got this one. But we'll talk well, about I never... I never owned another Nintendo right. product until the Wii. And then I only owned that long enough to play Zelda and the first Super Mario Galaxy before I sold it for a profit back nice. when I could still make more than my money's worth on a Wii because it was still that hard to find. Well, um, yeah. we'll talk some more about Pokemon next week. You can, I guess, chime in with because I mean, we're going to talk about old Pokemon games too. Is I think the overall yeah. topic is going to be that Pokemon has to evolve because it really hasn't changed a lot. Uh, and uh, I think I'll probably finish up my division stuff. New Shield will be out, so I'll give my weekly update on that. And you can do whatever is you know happened in the Fortnite world. Yeah, I'm hoping. I'm hoping. The fuck, that <laughs> idiot. The hoping. Anyway, <laughs> hoping. Now, I'm hoping I get through a little bit more of Mario Tennis Aces. Okay. And I find somebody to make a run through on a way out. Hopefully have those to talk about next time. Awesome. Well, uh, out right now, uh, just so everybody knows, is a brand new LARP Brothers episode. Go check that out at YouTube.com. Uh, just look up the LARP Brothers. We don't have a, a, a unique URL yet. And uh, that's pretty much it for our future villains so thank you for joining guys uh we'll see you next time we need we really need a, a way to end this podcast <laughs> uh a rigmarole over. of our own yep a rigmarole of our own but nope it's over join us next time next week same game time say i'm just gonna stop now <laughs>